Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth, and there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down upon the earth. A third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up. And all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the waters and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and the third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and so, and also a third of the night. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. So reads Revelation 8. Verse 1 through 13, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And now for our introduction to this chapter. All of these trumpets tell of war. The successive invasions of the Roman Empire under Alaric, Genseric, Attila the Hun, and Odacer are vividly portrayed on the canvases of history. The first was Alaric, king of the Gauls, A.D. 395 to the year of A.D. 410. Consider the devastation that was caused by Alaric. The horrors of war caused the trees and green grass to be burned up. The second invasion was by Genseric, king of the Vandals, A.D. 423 to A.D. 468. A great mountain, a symbol of some kingdom burning out of control, is cast into the sea. The waves are dyed red with blood. The vandals sail into the Tiber and attack Rome from the sea. The third trumpet sounds, and a star falls from heaven. The rivers and waters are smitten. On the banks of rivers, the chief cities of this world have been located. In A.D. 433 to A.D. 455, Attila the king of the Huns invaded the Roman Empire. He was like a meteor streaking across the sky, leaving destruction in his way. He soon burned out. He was styled the scourge of God. The fourth trumpet sounds, and a third part of the sun, moon, and stars are smitten. This must represent political overthrow. 
the final conquest of Rome came at the hands of Odacer, king of the Hurlii, A.D. 476 to 490. Rome had not seen an enemy in a thousand years. But the Roman Senate goes down. It was a time of political upheaval. The winds of war have been released upon the empire. And now for our verse-by-verse exposition. Verse 1. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. This would be a brief period, a state of anxious suspense, a time in which there was an absence of sound the calm before the storm, the hush before the rush of battle, the quiet that precedes and presages the awful play of the stormy elements. Verse 2, I saw seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. These seven angels are poised with trumpets in hand to signal events that are to happen. In the Old Testament, trumpets were used to signal that God's people were to go to Mount Sinai, Exodus 19 and 20. It was to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month in the year of Jubilee. Leviticus 25 and 9. Trumpets were to sound for the calling of the assembly and the journeyings of the camp. Numbers 10 and verse 2. Here the trumpets will signal a series of events. Verse 3 says that another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. No particular angel is named, but this angel was to offer the prayers of saints to our God. This was written to encourage Christians of all times to pray, even in times when God is sounding a trumpet of judgment upon certain people. Verse 4, The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. So our God hears these prayers. The judgments constituted in the vision are an answer to them. Recall what the souls under the altars were crying out for in Revelation 6 and 10. They called out in a loud voice, How long, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Verse 5, Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth, And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. All of this is prefatory to the ominous events that are about to happen. The censer is hurled to the earth, thus showing that the judgments of God would be upon mankind. Great events were signaled in this fashion. Let me compare what happened at Mount Sinai. On the morning of the third day there was thunder and lightning, with a thick cloud over the mountain, and a very loud trumpet blast. Every one in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently 
and the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Then Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. Exodus chapter 19, verse 16 through 19. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The deliberation has now ended. All preparation has been made, and now the events are about to happen. The prophet Joel, in vivid language, describes an awful calamity which was to befall Israel. He said, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill, let all who live in the land tremble, for the Lord, day of the Lord is coming, it is close at hand. Joel 2 and verse 1. Verse 7. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood. And it was hurled down upon the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Hail, fire, blood. The scene must have been one of awful destruction. The three terms must mean devastation of some kind. Note also that there is a significance attached to the word third part. Gibbons writes in his Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, that from the time of Charlemagne to that of the Crusades, the world was occupied by three great empires, the Greeks, the Saracens or Arabians, and the Franks or Latins. Gibbons chapter 43. The first four angels desolate one-third, that is, the Latin part. The fifth angel lets loose the Saracen invasion and conquers the Saracen part of the world. The sixth angel, bound beyond the Euphrates, pours its myriads on the remaining third of the world, namely the Greek part, and establishes the Turkish Empire upon its ruins. The first trumpet, therefore, must have its fulfillment in the campaign of Alaric, king of the Gauls, A.D. 395 to the year of 410 A.D. After the death of Theodosius in A.D. 395, the Gauls revolted from the Roman power. Alaric, disappointed in his expectation of being in command of the Roman armies, became their leader, Gibbons, Volume 2, page 213. At the midnight hour, the Salarian Gate was opened. The inhabitants were awakened by the sound of the Gothic trumpet. Eleven hundred and sixty-three years after the foundation of the imperial city, which had subdued and civilized such a large part of mankind, was delivered to the licentious fury of the tribes of Germany and Scythia. Gibbons, Volume 2, page 260. Gathered out of the unexplored north like a mighty torrent, they threw themselves like a savage host upon Rome. Barbarous as the Indians of the desert, they left behind, blackened, scarred, scorched, bloody and desolate lands. Lands once blooming like gardens now look like deserts. Rome had not seen a capable enemy in 800 years. The siege lasted for three days as the sack went on. Glutted with blood and spoils they left, eight days later Alaric was dead. Bereft of their leader, they hurried back and buried themselves in the unexplored north. 
Thus I believe this to be the first trumpet. Read the history books and decide for yourselves. Verse 8 and 9. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a large mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and the third of the ships were destroyed. You remember that the world now was divided into three parts. It is this third Latin part that this destruction will be aimed at. Jeremiah 51.25 says, I am against you, O destroying mountain. You who destroy the whole earth, declares the Lord, I will stretch out my hand against you, roll you off the cliffs, and make you a burned out mountain. Jeremiah 51, 25. We must therefore look for a mountain, that is, a heathen power, that will be cast into the sea and attack the third part of the world from the sea. The symbols of blood and ships being destroyed indicate that we should look for a maritime battle. I believe that Genseri, king of the Vandals, in the year of 423 through 468, fulfills this trumpet. They rush, rush over Gaul, sweep through Spain, leap over the narrow straits of Gibraltar, and they took North Africa. They built a fleet and assailed Rome from the seas. For six hundred years no ship was hostile to Rome. The Vandals sailed into the Tiber and met in the shock of battle. The Roman ensign goes down, and the islands and mainland fall into the hands of the barbarians. Nearly thirty years after the contest began, they rush upon Rome and spare neither age nor sex. The spoil of eight hundred years and a hundred nations was loaded on the Vandal ships. Rome was blasted, sacked, scorched, and pillaged. Genseric died a few months later. Notice that this prophetic utterance says that the mountain, the heathen power, the Vandals, would come by the sea. They were about a burning mountain. This mountain would be extinguished by the sea. Then Genseric was extinguished in a few months after his mission was accomplished. The Word of God is never wrong. In verses 10 and 11, the third angel sounds his trumpet, and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the third of the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. As the third angel sounds his trumpet, a great star falls on the waters. The star is bitter, and many people die. We must look, therefore, for a person of high rank. In Genesis 37, 9 through 11, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Zebulun, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, and Benjamin are called stars. We speak of great actors as stars. Great players in sports are stars. Let's look at history and see if we can identify a star that fell upon the rivers. I believe that Attila, king of the Huns, from 433 to 455 A.D., fulfills this trumpet. In a manner resembling a meteor in the sky, this brilliant warrior, who styled himself the scourge of God, appeared suddenly. In three years he was burned out. He marched through Central Asia, north of the Exine Sea,
through Russia and knocked at the river boundary of the Roman Empire, overcame opposition at the Danube, crossed the Rhine, and at the river Marne, 150,000 to 300,000 were slain. The river ran with blood. The next battle was at the river Rhone. He crossed the Alps and fought a battle at the river Po. Victorious, he marched for the imperial prize. Rome sent out a priestly delegation that intervened in behalf of Rome. He made Budapest on the Danube his capital, and when he died, he was buried beneath its waters. This bitter wormwood star soon ran its brilliant course. This group of people known as the Huns was a nomadic, mongoloid people who raised horses and sheep. They lived in tents and traveled about carrying their belongings with them. They were fierce fighters and were merciless. Horde after horde had joined together until there were thousands and thousands of them. They first began by swarping, swarming across the country, murdering, stealing, and leaving whole towns in ruins. Attila's father's name was Ra. He conquered all of northern Europe. The Romans were terrified of their new enemy. So Theodosius II, emperor of Rome, came up with a plan. He offered the Huns a chance to serve in the Roman army. The Romans and the Huns agreed that in order to facilitate this, that they would exchange a hostage. Romans sent Atius to the Huns, and the Huns sent Attila. Attila was only ten years old when he arrived in Rome. He hated being in Rome, and he longed for the day he could return to his homeland. In 434, his uncle Ra died, and Attila became the king. Now Attila had dreams of becoming the ruler of the Hunnish tribes and conquering China, India, and Persia. Because of the Great Wall of China, which was 1,800 miles long, he was unsuccessful in his attempt to conquer China. However, he went to work building up a strong army, to attack the Roman Empire. In 451, with his army of 700,000 horsemen, he appeared on the Rhine River, crossed over into Gaul, now France, and conquered Orleans. Attila massacred every man, woman, and child in the city. Attila slaughtered all who resisted him. They called him the scourge of God. After a defeat at the hands of the Roman general, Atius regrouped and again went after the Romans. He now crossed through Hungary, Yugoslavia, and the northern Alps. He soon reached the Po River, north of Rome. He marched southward through the countryside. He laid waste and captured city after city. Rome knew that she could not resist the army of Attila, so she sent a delegation of priests led by Pope Leo I. This delegation bought off Attila and persuaded him to return to his homeland. After he returned home, he married and died while celebrating his own wedding. His army fell apart, and they returned to shepherding. This brilliant star had burned out, but the memory and the horror of the Huns still lives on in infamy. Verses 12 and 13. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that the third of them turned dark, a third of the day was without light, also a third of the night. As I watched, I heard an eagle, eagle that was flying in mid-air call out in a loud voice, Whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded 
by the other three angels. Now we're told that the theater has changed to sun, moon, and stars. These symbols were used extensively in the Old Testament to describe the fall of nations or empires. I call your attention to Isaiah and to Ezekiel. First, Isaiah 13, verse 10. The stars of heaven and their constellations will not show their light. The rising sun will be darkened and the moon will not give her light. Verse 13. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble and the earth will shake. Verse 19. Babylon, the jewel of kingdoms, the glory of the Babylonians' pride will be overthrown by God like Sodom and Gomorrah. 